NPR Makilala TV, the first Filipino-American TV talk show in the New York metro area. Get to know us as we talk to the community leaders, innovators, advocates, and emerging artists who affect Filipino-American life. The Philippines' recent economic growth is highly dependent on the overseas Filipino worker, the nation's modern heroes. However, in the pursuit of the American dream, Filipinos sometimes fall into the hands of traffickers. Human trafficking is a form of modern-day slavery affecting 21 million people around the world. According to the 2014 Global Report from United Nations on Drugs and Crime, 49% of the victims are adult women. Does trafficking happen in New York? Chances are, no matter where you live, it is happening nearby. From a woman hired as a teacher who ended up working 24-7 as a nanny, to the girl taken at a bus stop and forced into prostitution, to the woman brought here against her will, working in a sweatshop or a restaurant, who had her passport taken, one thing is common, the loss of freedom. Is there a way to protect these workers? Is there a way out? Is there life after human trafficking? I'm Jen Fuhrer, and this is Makilala TV. Joining me in the discussion are my co-hosts, Rochelle Ocampo and Christina Pastor. Our special guests are two courageous women, Annie Bello, the president of Maharlika Cleaning Cooperative, and Carmen Fajardo, a trafficking survivor. Annie, Carmen, welcome to Makilala. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so Annie, I mean Carmen, let me start with you. You wrote, my employer brought me here against my will. Yes. Um, I guess if you can explain. Um, before that, when I started with them, our salary given like three months late, four months, and then comes to 10 months. When then 10 months come, I want to go home. Because when they're planning to come here in the state, it's April, 2000 and April 2010. That's my, my end of contract with them. will end at May 1. So I said, it's going to be one week. So I begged them off that I want to go home with my kids because that's the first time that I'm going. That's the first time I was away with them. Carmen, I've been excuse me, your employers are diplomats, right? Yes, they are the royal, one of the royal families of okay. Saudi Arabia. Okay. So I, I begged off. I said, I want to go home. I want to see my kids. Even though you don't want my, to give me my 10 months salary, it's OK. Just give me one week ticket. So, no, you, they need you. You need to come. Okay, if you will bring me to America, I will tell the police that you're not giving me my salary because the embassy told me that I have my rights the same as the U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. Still, they, breath, they brought me here. So I told them my contract with them are, are done here in America. And the, the doctor of the princess said, oh, she will, she will uh, renew your contract. No, I'm sorry. I don't want to. I don't want to renew anymore. I want to go home. How so did you? Yeah. What did you do after that? Yeah. How did you get out? How did you escape? Uh, the U.S. Embassy in Saudi Arabia gave me a, a small book wi where there is a, a telephone number of the human trafficking hotline, and they told me that if your contract, uh, if your rights are violated in the states, you contact this number. But I had doesn't I don't I don't know what the, the 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 rights that they have violated to me. But I decided to call that number, and I told them my situation is, and they said okay. They asked me the time that I the, that they can contact me. I said I'm working, eight eight o'clock in the morning. I will be in the hospital. There's no people around. You can call me. So the following morning, they called me and they gave me an organization who will help me. So that's the start. Of, and then they told me that they booked me in a hotel for three days. Mm -hmm. And then so you can bring out your stuff because you are free moving in the, in the hotel. You're so already in New York at this time, yes. right? Okay. We arrived here April, April 27 mm -hmm. of 2010. 
So while and you this, were yeah, go ahead, Jen. While you were in Saudi Arabia, is that right? While you while you're not Qatar or whatever it was, while you were there, you couldn't get out. You couldn't. We're not allowed to get out. Uh, we don't have any days off. We're allowed to get out only on my. We just need to make a, an alibi to get out. But how were you able to come to the U.S. without alerting the immigration there that you're being trafficked? Did you go through immigration? No, we, we are not going through immigration. The, um, we're because we're flying through a private plane, so immigration comes out in the plane. Because how do I know? Because I saw the all our passport lying on the table. So you never had your passport with you? No, they had it the whole time. Yes. So you were essentially trafficked even when you were in the Middle East? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. And then you came here to continue the situation that you were under? Yes, we're roaming around the city yeah. without any IDs. So, and then you contacted the Philippine authorities, you said something. No, with, I, it's not the Philippine authority, US. it's the US. The US it's the US human trafficking. Okay. Because it's the US embassy who gave me that number. Okay, so please continue. <laughs> and then, when I am here, they always, my employers always had a, a, a thinking that I am going to run away because they're always bringing me whenever the, mm. the, 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 my patient is. They bring me to Europe, they bring me, so that's why I... When you say patient, are you uh, in the medical field or...? I am a caregiver back a caregiver. home. I'm a certified caregiver in the Philippine, Philippines. So I'm working side by side with a doctor in Saudi Arabia, okay. taking care of the bedridden mom. Oh. So we are free to move around when we are in other countries, but without a passport. But what, what, how did they treat you? How did the family treat you? Were you treated nicely? We, I am treated nicely. The, thi the, the thing is, I'm working long hours. She from didn't get 8 o'clock. She didn't get paid, yeah. I'm, I'm working from 8 o'clock in the morning up to 8 o'clock. Uh, in the in mornings, so every day. Oh my gosh, over 10 months of not getting paid. I'm still working. And, and still working and not getting paid. Yes, just I'm the still working. that you had to go through. Um, wow. I'm going to switch to Annie a little bit because <laughs> that's like a, uh, that your story yeah. is the story of a lot of people in your co op, in your group. <coughs> um, in fact, you, I guess you're exposed in that, in that yes. kind of. Um, what that community? Yes, they exactly. even wanted to talk about unwanted, my unwanted shattered dream. Yeah. Um, but you are the president of Maharika Cleaning Co-op, which is um, owned by women. Yes. Um, all the owners are co-workers. I yes, mean, are, are, exactly. are the and all are most of them are human trafficking survivors. Exactly. So you may want to um, say more about it. Well, actually, this uh, Maharika, Maharika Cleaning Cooperative now, uh, most of our member are human traffic. And, but some are not, <coughs> and we are creating this cooperative to create sustainable job for everyone so that we can help people out there who needs job as well. And we created a very good relationship to one another because as what they said, no man is an island. So we need to be chained to one another so that we can able to help one another. If you need job, if you need someone to talk to, and of course, we build a good relationship, not only for ourselves as cooperative, mm -hmm. we build relationship as well to our clients, mm -hmm. and we use a very friendly uh, products. H to how, how is business so far? Uh, uh, our business is... Do you is have a lot of clients? Not a lot of clients. We have clients. That's why thank you so much for this opportunity that we are here in Makilala TV show that people out there who needs cleaning services, please contact Maharlika Cleaning Cooperative. And we need more clients. That's, <laughs> that's why we are here, mm -hmm. because there are more incoming members to Maharlika Cleaning Cooperative, but we don't want to accept more members if we cannot sustain their jobs. So mm -hmm. right now, we are looking forward to be successful in this business so that we can help people. Can, can you give them an idea of who are your clients right now so that other Filipino offices might be interested in getting in touch with you? Yeah, our clients mostly are from um, uh, foundation uh, people like Brooklyn Community Foundation and uh, North Star Fund. There's some mm -hmm. lady who's working over there. And some are nonprofit organizations like, uh, like Adhikar. So we and, and others as well. So as of now, we are truly in, in need.
for more clients. And uh, that's our vision. Um, whenever I think of Maharlika, the word Maharlika, I actually think of the restaurant that we have here in New York <laughs> City, who's who's owned by Nicole Ponseca. Yeah. So, can you tell me wh how did you f um, come up with the name Maharlika for your your cleaning cooperative? Actually, there is uh, the Maharlika ladies now has a story behind the scene. Uh, j last two months ago, month of July, uh, someone told us that we have to start a uh, name change for our group. So Because he used to... Yeah, because we used different name at the time. And when on the way home, I start crying because it's so very heart-wrenching experience. So it occurs to me the Maharlika name. Because the Maharlika name means powerful yeah. and precious. Exactly, which is what S Filipino women are, right? Yeah. yeah. All of us are powerful mm -hmm. and precious. So that's why we called our co-op Maharlika because you see those love, those beautiful ladies. Of course, <laughs> they are <laughs> they are very precious people. Yeah. I mean, I I am um, your story. Um, you have to tell both your you know, all your stories because there are women out there who are scared who yeah. don't think they have a way out. I mean, you were working for it seems like a very rich person. Um, a diplomat or, or royalty member or a royal yeah. a member royal of family. family and most people are scared in that position I mean how how did you get the courage to both of you I'm maybe gonna answer how did you get the courage to get past it how did you get the courage to move on and you know get a different direction you know when you're when you're a family when you have a family and you have kids depending on you and when I did that I didn't know that I have it that's true I didn't know that I have it, but my 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 I want what I want during those times is to see my kids. Mm -hmm. You know the Undoy one. My wa my house is one of the big oh one really of them. Yeah. It's flooded. Then yeah. my making my just my kids and my household and my other son is th mm -hmm. are there. It's good that they are out when the flood <laughs> came to our house. So when I told, I need to go home, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. I said, when I, uh, you cannot get out when you are in the country or in Saudi. You cannot run away from them. But here is, you are in America. You can do this. Mm -hmm. But if I want to get out and stay here in America, I want to fight them legally. So what did you do when you got here? We wanted to know the steps so that other people can learn from your experience maybe? Maybe the first sign is when they gave me the number. number. The U.S. Embassy gave me a oh number okay. to call. Mm -hmm. And, 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 I, don't, and I, I have no, no I, I don't have plan to run away here in America and stay TNT. Mm -hmm. TNT is Tago and Tago. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Without any papers because I want to see my kids. You just wanted to go back to the Philippines. Uh -huh. I want to go back. But... I threw away that, that book. I threw it away. But I have a roommate and I said, they gave me, a, they gave me, they're always thinking that I'm gonna run away, I'm gonna run away. Okay, you want a problem? I'm gonna give you a problem. I told them. I got the book and I called them. I th and then I, I don't know what will happen if I call this number. But I need to call them and I need to do this. I need to get, a on the other line said, what do you want to do? I want to get out of my employer. Because they did Very this one. Statement, yeah. They asked me, what, what are your situation there? My situation here is still good. But you know, the people of Saudi, they change mine so easily. I work seven days a week, mm -hmm. no days off, uh, more than 10 hours a day, every day from 8 to 1 o'clock in a.m. And then I'm work, I'm going around the city without any passport. What did they recommend that you do? So they, they said, oh, how can we contact you? Was oh. there any agency that helped you? Yes. The, the following day, the, the, uh, the people who, who I contacted, they gave me an, an organization. What they is that organization? The Safe Horizon. Oh, OK, yeah. The Safe Horizon booked us. I said us because we are two. Oh, okay. 
they book us in a ho in a hotel somewhere in in West Side. In West Side. By the yeah. time you had take you had the courage already to move away to run away yes. from your employer, that yeah. takes a lot of, you know, <laughs> because shots. when yeah. you are when you when you when you have a goal and you want to do it, you need to push pursue it. Yeah, I don't know that I have that in me. Because I am the one who just work, work, and work. Mm -hmm. But if you are planning to do something more, you can do it. Mm -hmm. So, and all the women that you are kind of leading, since you're president of this group, um, you all these are all the women in your group. So yes. How do you, you have a lot of courageous women in your group? <coughs> yes, I think all <laughs> of us. Uh, actually, even though you, even though you are not um, human traffic, everybody. All this lady has their own story. Mm -hmm. Some of them are battered wife. Some of them are not treating right. Did that somehow get any help from the Filipino community? Uh, actually, we're the Maharikal right now. We want to appreciate the Makilala TV show. That this is one thing that you're helping us. Well, oh, aside from I've, us. I've heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to move on. Know, to move on for what? We had experience in the past, and I have, a, I have a quick question. Do you have a male order, male order women in your group? No, no not guys. yet. Not yet. No, 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 we don't have that. Well, Ani, I want to ask you. You hear these different stories that are from from the from the people in your organization. What are some of the signs that people should watch watch out for? And like, wait, this is not right. This is not something that that is that's legal. Um, what are some signs that people should look out for? Well, actually, you first thing and foremost, you should know yourself where you stand on so that you will not be confused and you will see when people are not treating you right, when people are only using you for their own needs. Nobody wants to use you because we are human. We have spirit, body, and soul. We are not things to use. We are here to help each other, to support each other, and to be nice to each other and to create very harmonious relationship within our community, with our uh, countrymen, and with our employer as well. So if you see that the people are not treating you right, I think you should be brave and courageous to say, wait a minute, this is not right. Don't treat me this way. Don't discriminate me this way. Don't discriminate my ability that I can do this, yeah, that I can do it. that. Yeah. Because all of us has a gift different gifts, all of us. So everybody has a chance to prove herself that she can be a good leader somehow. Mm -hmm. We don't know where, when, but still we are good mm -hmm. That's really good. Um, how do they get a hold of Moharlika? Cleaning Cooperative. Um, you have your website, your... Um yes, we have uh, a website, uh, cleaningmaharlika.coop, and we have our phone number. That's the name, Cleaning Maharlika or Maharlika Cleaning? Uh, this, is Clean. this is Maharlika <laughs> Cleaning Cooperative. You confused me. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> and we have 646-661-5650. Uh, this is our contact number. And we have a P.O. Box 1254 New York, New York City, 10159. Maharlika Cleaning You can tell I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah. Can tell I'm wrapping it up. Yes. We can extend it for like yeah. an hour. Yeah. Um, I know you mentioned earlier they held your passport. I think that's one of the signs that you are being trafficked is that they hold on, they, they, they hide your passport from you. They hide your yeah. passport. So yeah. in, in few seconds, because we're, we're closing, uh, what can you advise, like advise the women out there? Uh, so all the women who's been abused, who has been uh, uh, abused, hurt verbally or or physically, don't be afraid. Because um, if you don't come strong, nothing will gonna nothing gonna change your life. You need to be strong. You need to to do what is right. Uh, if you if your passport has been taken, you've been working long hours. Or your, you, and somebody's gonna tell you, oh, they, you're gonna be, you're gonna be sent back home. No, you're there wrong. Somebody's gonna help you if you're gonna come out in the open. Mm -hmm. Somebody, we need to 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 let our voices hear. So something's gonna be, gonna get uh, something 
heard. Mm -hmm. I guess. Did, uh, did the royal family, Carmen, did they pay you? Did you get paid for the 10 months that they did not pay you? Just before they, they, they bring me here. Oh, they paid you. Oh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. There's so many more questions There's you so want to ask. There's so many more. It's more so my story. You know what I, mean, I did with that? I talked to the son. Oh, the son is okay. The son I mean, the reason why I, I got involved with this is that I was on Facebook. I think it was three years ago. And I was typing, and I got this message on Messenger. Somebody from Qatar, a daughter, needed help. It's like, oh, please, can you please help my mother? I'm like, when I first read it, I go like, this can't possibly be true. And then... And Sounds like a hoax. It's like, and I go like, and I read it again, and I started crying. Well, that's not a, you know, <laughs> nothing new. I cry anytime. <laughs> the, the story, it was like, I mean, there were three Filipino teachers who were being held, and they, they couldn't escape. And, mm -hmm. and I showed it to, you know, I was working with Falaf then, and then before I know, I was talking to this woman through Facebook for nine days, through, through Thanksgiving, un until the time she was rescued. Even the day that she was being rescued, it was like, a tr I mean, it was like chaotic because they wouldn't let her out of, of the hotel. They like, and the women, the women that were there, as another thing, some of the women who are, be, I guess, like a battered wife syndrome, they didn't want to leave. Yeah. So they were, mm. you know, they were, they, they, they didn't know whether uh, maybe this is, the n this is normal to be here, to be in this state. But as you said, you really don't know. It's almost, and I was like, it can't be happening in New York. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But I think did. that's one of the best decisions you did. Yeah. Come to the United States. Because here, it's more it's an equitable society, or you know. so we try. Because you cannot do anything. Yeah. You need to come. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I hate to interrupt, but sadly, um, our conversations have come to an end. Um, Annie, Carmen, to the, all the women behind the co-op, thank you so much. Um, there are so much more to discuss, as you can tell. Um, yeah. But you know, for now, your voice, your story will definitely inspire and give hope to others. We wish we were able to give justice to your strength and courage. Um, and to us as a community, let us show our resolve and support them at Maharlika Cleaning that co-op. And as a public service announcement to all Filipinos and Filipino Americans, assistance to nationals or ATN is one of the pillars of the Philippine foreign policy. If you're in distress and in need of help, please don't hesitate to contact the Philippine Consulate General in New York by calling 212-764-1330 or extension 4007. Or you can get the hold of them on Facebook because most of them don't have access to, to phone. Go get them hold of them on Facebook at PH Consulate in New York. So before we close our show with a musical number, I'd like to thank you all for inviting us into your homes. To all our supporters, the production cast, the crew here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, thank you, Marami Salamat. So, Ulitin, until next time. So, now that we're done crying, <laughs> <laughs> are you ready to karaoke? <laughs> okay, let's give a round of applause to the model, singer, host, and practical nurse, Michelle Michelle. Oh, before I forget, I want to thank my co host, by the way, Michelle Ocampo and Christina Pasto for this emotional but really important <laughs> topic. Yeah. Um, Michelle Michelle from Prom D Productions, Skiing and Queen of Hearts concert on October 9th. Singing One Hello, a composition by Randy Crawford. Michelle, take it away.
Ooh, ooh. 